All right, <clears throat> we're live, got a new computer. Hopefully everything's working cool. Um, just gonna do a short stream today, really quick. Wait for some people to show up. I'm excited to get to the bottom of this. How, how to mix a kick with an 808 properly. Let's Let's figure it out, boys. Let's get this shit done, you know what I mean? All right, let me pull this up on my phone. Hopefully I'm live. I just got a new laptop, so my my setup's a little different, but everything should be should be rocking right now. Check one, two. Am I live? I can't really tell. Brand new laptop, so if it's not working, I hopefully it is, but <laughs> ready to get to the bottom of the 808 science. Let's Let's do this. Okay, you guys are here. Great, 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 great. Let's wait for some homies to trickle in. <clears throat> the only reason I'm streaming right now is because I want to figure out this, how to mix a kick with an 808 thing, just once and for all. It's been a lot of videos, there's been a lot of, you should side chain, you shouldn't side chain, you don't need, you know. I know the answer, but let, let's learn together, you know. Let's figure it out. How's the stream looking, boys? I got a new laptop, so maybe it's a little smoother now. I don't know. Hopefully. Couldn't be any worse than my last uh, computer, so. We're going to figure this thing out together. Um, what's going on, DLG? How you doing, man? Is the stream like smooth right now or is it choppy? <clears throat> Trust HQ, what up, what up, what up, what up? Looks pretty smooth, okay, cool, cool, cool. What is my Twitch login? Just gotta do one thing. Wait for some homies to show up here. DJ All Love, what's up? All right, so as I said, there's been some disputes over like, should you side chain a kick to an 808? Or side chain an 808 to a kick rather. Should you just not sidechain at all. Does it sound better? Is it different? You know, so we're going to kind of figure it out today. I'm going to show you, I already set up this session where it's ready to go. I'm going to show you one, two, three, four, five, six different ways to do it and how they sound. Should we just get into it, boys? What do you think? So uh, let me pull this up really quick. <laughs> let's go. Let's do it, man. Let's figure it out, man. 
I just want to know for myself, honestly, because I, I do sometimes struggle with that, like getting the balance between a kick and an 808 to just be right. Um, I just want to figure it out. I just want to know the best way to do it. Okay, let's get into it, boys. All right, so I've already set this session up. Um, it's the same kick, same 808 on each of these channels. Um, same volume, same everything. There's uh, they're all going through this drum bus, but there's nothing on it. There's just a uh, me, just a. Uh, oscilloscope um yeah let's get into it okay so the first method of like mixing a kick with an 808 is just just literally not do anything like no eq no sidechain nothing like that right you guys want to just hear the samples first that might help right get these a little bigger so you can see what's going on I just grabbed like kind of random stuff out of my library, but. There's your kick drum, right? 808. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. Now, what typically happens if, if you don't do anything, if I just leave this kick in this 808, together like this without treating them or side chaining or any of the other stuff you can do to fix it. What happens is basically they just stack on top of each other. So you're just going to get like, if there's low end in the kick and low end in the 808, it's just going to double that frequency. Right. And then what tends to happen is it'll just clip. So we can hear these two together. I think all this other stuff's muted, right? Muted, muted, muted. Okay, cool. So you can hear there, just on the, the attack, there's a little bit of um, distortion, right? Sometimes people want that. That's not like necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you kind of want that, you know what I mean? So the first method to kind of fix it is to literally just do like a crossfade or just like do an upfade on the 808, <clears throat> right? So we have our kick here same exact sounds and what i did here is just did a just did a volume fade on the 808 and you, you should be able to hear the difference here so super clean right i mean you can just look on this you can look on this and see how clean that is Right, so that's one way to do it, which sounds fine to me, you know? You see on this oscilloscope, I'm going back to the dry one, you can see it just starts clipping, right? You're just getting a stack of like two low end things that just basically doubles the volume of it, you know? These are the same volume and everything, right? So that's the crossfade, that works, sounds fine, right? Uh, what's another method? Another method is just EQing, right? So on this one, I just, um, same exact sounds. I just put a pro Q on and just rolled off the low end. Exactly like where the 808's hitting. This to me, like, doesn't sound good. Like, at least with these sounds, like just, just rolling off the low end of a kick is like kind of not the wave because, I mean, a kick is low end, right? It's that punch. It's that like, you know, you don't want to lose that basically. So we can listen to that. So it just kind of like loses all its power. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for me, at least with like an 808 kick thing, I, I, I would never do that. Like you're just losing all the fucking fundamental of the kick drum, you know, 
And you can't really do it the other way. You can't like EQ the 808 to like fit the kick drum because then you'll just lose all the low end from the, the 808. Like doesn't make sense, you know? Uh, another method, which is like, this definitely like takes more work, but some people do this. Um, I think this is big in like, you know, other styles of electronic music is just like phase aligning the 808 with the kick or the bass with the kick. Um, so one way you can do that is literally just like put them on the same track. So I just took the 808, the kick, just crossfaded them. And what you can do is you can actually get in here and like move this around, you know, and phase align it with the kick drum, which is like a super, super clean way to do it. It's probably like the cleanest technically, like on a technical level, it's probably like the cleanest way to do it, you know? So let's listen to that real quick. You can hear it's just like completely seamless, right? It's literally probably the best way to do it. Like I, I can't really think of a better way to to get a, a super clean kick slash 808. But it's it doesn't really make sense in a lot of sessions, you know what I mean? Unless you're using that same note every single time, like it's just gonna be a pain in the ass, you know? Like I've never done that in a track where I've done this method, but yeah, if you're just using doing one note and one kick the whole time or whatever, then it totally works. Um the other method is obviously like a side chain, right? So what I did here, um, I'm just side, side chaining the 808 with uh, Pro C. And I'm not triggering the side chain with the kick. I'm triggering it with this click sound up here. Um, make sure I'm on the right track, is this it? Yeah, so I'm just tr triggering it with this sound here, just this click. Uh, it just tends to work like way better. You just get a way tighter kind of side chain. So let's see how that sounds. Again, super, super clean, right? Sounds, sounds good. So basically what I did with that side chain is like, I'll literally pull this oscilloscope up And I'll just run it till I see that, I mean, how do, how do I explain this? Okay, so if I roll back this, this release, you see that peak coming in just right after the attack of the kick drum? That means it's still double, doubling the low end, right? So you're just getting that, that crazy peak and that um, kind of clipping. So what you can do is you can just keep rolling this pulling the release up until that disappears. So that's the sweet spot right there. Uh, the only problem with that is that there's any noise in the tail, it can sound kind of abrupt. Noise in the tail, the tail of what? The 808? I mean, it, it's clicking at the end when I stop because it's just like stopping in the middle of the waveform, but again, that, okay, side chain kind of sounds, sounds clean, sounds good, right? And then for this last one, I did a, a multi-band side chain. So same kind of thing, but on this one, I, I made a, a chain where I have the, the mids and the highs kind of on one band, on one chain, and then the lows on the other, and then I'm just side chaining the lows. So I use this uh, frequency splitter. This is like a free Max for Live thing. It's really good, really useful. Um, so on the highs, no side chain, right? I can just solo that so you can hear what it's. Right, there's still a little bit of kind of low mids, but it's not gonna get in the way of the kick. And then here's just the low end.
and the low end has the side chain on it. And it's pretty much the same curve as that that previous side chain that I did. So you can listen to that. Sounds good, right? So what what have we learned here? <laughs> pretty much all of these pretty much sound the same, right? The only one that doesn't, the only two that don't sound good are is, is when you just go dry and don't treat it at all. And when you EQ the low end out of the kick, it just doesn't, it just kind of loses all its power, right? So I actually printed all these so you can hear the difference. Um, I just printed this, this top uh, group here. This is all of them in a row, and then here I just kind of chopped them so you can see which which is which, but they kind of all sound the same, except for the EQ and the dry. Right? I mean, there's there's pretty much no difference, except for this and this. Right, the dry one has that that kind of clipping distortion on it. Crossfade, super clean. EQ doesn't sound good to me. Just loses all the power of the kick. Phase align. Super super clean. Side chain. Super super clean. Multi bad side chain. Super clean, right? So the one thing I kind of figured out is like, <laughs> you saw you saw the tweet too, yeah. So kind of all these methods work, right? The first one for me doesn't work, just not doing anything. But what I did find that actually sounds good is literally just putting a limiter. Like if, if I limit this, uh, here, let me show you. Um, if I put a limiter on this chain, this is the dry one, right? Nothing, no EQ, no sidechain, nothing, right? I'm just gonna stock Ableton EQ uh, limiter. I haven't tweaked it or anything. And then I just print this. Um, just print it down here. So. Problem solved, right? Like it's it's not clipping anymore. It's definitely getting louder. Like the kick is getting like way louder. Right on this attack here. It sounds really, it sounds fine though, right? I mean, you can even just look at that waveform and tell it's like, I mean, it almost looks like it's phase aligned, right? I mean, we could compare it to the the actual phase aligned one here. I mean, essentially what's happening there is it's just getting louder. Like the kick's like just getting louder, you know? But, you know, the waveform looks fine. Like it sounds fine. I would just say like, if you're not gonna like, if you're not gonna do side chain or you're not gonna do any of that, just try limiting, putting, putting a limiter on the kick and the 808 at the same time. It just sounds really good. I think, honestly, that's probably what I'm gonna do from now on. The only issue is, is that um, I tend to run like all my drums through a drum bus. So if you're doing that and you have the 808 going through that drum bus, that might sound a little weird, but. Uh, cross and volume fades probably provide the most control. Yeah, I would agree. I like, like I said, like the perfect way to do it is to phase align it. Like on a technical level, like that's kind of the best way to do it. But I think, I, I, I mean, what did we learn from this? They kind of all sound the same, right? If you do the right, if you do the right thing with it, like, 
they kind of all sound right to me. There's really no difference. You know what I mean? I think that, yeah, the only one that doesn't sound good to me is like rolling the low end off the kick drum so that the 808 kick uh, punches through more. That That doesn't sound good to me. But if you're using an 808 that has like a lot of punch to it, then you could totally do that and it'll sound fine, you know? It's kind of a case by case thing, but I think in general, like for me, I would I would either just keep side chaining because I'm just used to that and I think it sounds fine if you do it right, you know? You're not doing like a super deep, um, slow side chain. It's just really tight right with the kick. The 808 ducks down, the kick is there. You don't even hear it, it just sounds clean, you know? Depends on the sound selections. Yeah, for sure. But like, I think there's a time and a place to do literally every single one of these. Right? The dry, I think dry sounds really good if you put that limiter on. That sounds great to me. Like it just, it just hits really hard. It sounds good. Um, the crossfading thing works totally fine. Just like you know what I did there when I just did a little volume envelope on the 808 like this that sounds good too um I don't know if I would really do that though because it's just like a little bit more work than I would want to do like to go through a whole song and like do cross you know fade every single 808 it's a little bit annoying I get it kind of depends on the track the uh the phase alignment works perfectly but again it's just like a lot of work to actually do that like kind of doesn't make sense to do that um side chain side chain for me is is great because it's just fast you know what i mean once you get the settings right then you just don't have to worry about it the other nice thing about side chain okay the other good thing i mean we're just listening to the kick with an 808 every time right the problem with this dry method here if I have that same kick drum in the track and it's not hitting with the 808, it's not gonna sound as loud. You know what I'm saying? Like say I have the kick with the 808 here and then over here there's just the kick without anything. It's gonna, gonna literally sound like half as loud almost, you know? So that's kind of the issue with that. With, with sidechain, if your kick is hitting with your 808, um, it's super clean, and then if the kick is just by itself, it's going to sound exactly the same. Like, it's going to be the same volume, same EQ curve, and all that, you know? Um, when I use multiband is, like, and I've done this before. If I'm using, like, a sampler or something that has, like, an acoustic kick or, like, like something that, like, you, know, you know, like, the sound has an attack that I don't want to keep, that's kind of when I do that, you know? Like if the bass has some like mids and highs that I want to keep and I don't want them like ducking down too much, just want to sidechain the low end, then that's when I would do that. So they kind of like, moral of the story, they all work equally fine pretty much, you know? There's just a time and a place to do all these methods, man. Does that all make sense? Do we have questions? <laughs> Do we have questions? That's all I wanted to go over, man. I just wanted to get to the bottom of this thing, you know? Uh, why don't people use utility? What do you mean for, uh, for what? Uh, can you not create a chain and EQ the kick a certain way to just get the click high end, even the shape? Yeah, you can do that, but you're losing the low end of the kick. Like if you're, if you're EQing all the low end out of your kick, like it's not a kick anymore. It's just like a transient, you know? I mean, it depends on the kick. Like some, some kicks don't really have that much low end, but... If you're using a kick that has a nice kind of 
punchy low end, then why why would you roll off the low end on it, you know? Why would you get rid of it? Oh, utility to sidechain and draw the shape? Yeah, you can totally do that. That's like literally the same. It's the same. They're kind of all doing the same thing, you know? You could, I mean, literally like on my old sessions before um, I had a good sidechain method, I would do that. I would literally just volume automate the sidechain. And it sounded great, you know? It's just annoying to get the right the right shape or whatever, but once you get it, it sounds sounds great. Uh, do you use a custom Ableton skin? No. I just tweaked one of the the presets. That's it, man. That's all I wanted to go over today. I just wanted to get to the bottom of this shit cuz there's just there's so much like Everyone's got an opinion on this and I feel like I feel like all all these methods work fine. You know, it's just how you use them. If you use sidechain wrong, yeah, it's gonna sound shitty. It's gonna sound like it's just not gonna be good, you know, but it's all how you use them. Knowing how to use these tools. Like knowing how to do all these different things is very, very useful, you know, when you're mixing and engineering. Uh, hey Vaughn, I appreciate your streams. Your work ethic and positive attitude has taught me much, and I'm grateful. Thanks so much, man. Uh, when will I be streaming next? I'm not really sure. I got um, I got a session today, maybe later in the week or on the weekend or something. I'd like to jump back on, but yeah, man. I hope. Uh, do you guys have any other questions about this? <laughs> Can we just put this to bed? The moral of the story, there's no right or wrong way to do this, at least this specific thing. But generally, I think across music, like, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do anything, you know? The only thing that matters is the uh, end result. It's literally the only thing that matters. Like, how you get there, the listener doesn't care about that, you know? Does it sound great? Cool doesn't matter what you did to it to get that sound, you know? Um, thanks, DLG. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I, I was, it was just kind of bothering me, and I was like, I just wanted to know for myself. Like, I think I've covered it here. Uh, I'm totally open to, like, more discussion about this and, like, people's opinion on... I mean, I'm not, like, you know, whatever, the fucking greatest engineer producer of all time but so I, I i'm you know i don't know everything basically so i'm totally open to other opinions and and all that but i think this kind of like proves it like i literally printed all these doing different methods they all pretty much sound the same the only shit that sounds different is the eq'd one and the dry one just because it's it's clipping the crossfade, the phase align, the sidechain, the multiband sidechain all sound the same. Um, but yeah, I think I think for specifically like for hip hop stuff, I mean you could sidechain, it sounds fine if you do it right. But you you can you can just do dry and just just throw a limiter on it, man. It sounds great. Like it just gets rid of the clipping, right? That sounds fucking super clean, dude. And I didn't do shit. I literally just threw Ableton's stock limiter on it. And it sounds awesome. But without the limiter, it sounds like shit. That sounds like shit to me. Like, if... I just like to be in control of that kind of thing. Like, if the kick is, like, clipping with the 808 like that... I, I don't know. I'd rather do it a different way than just, like... You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather put saturation on the kick or a little distortion on the kick, you know? Um, yeah. That's that's pretty much it, guys. I don't know. I don't know where, where else to go. Did I do something wrong? Is there another method that you can use that works? 
I tried to think of everything. Yeah. Yeah, but like clipping, that's like an artistic choice, you know? If you if you want it to sound fucked up like this, that's totally cool. Like there's tons of awesome tracks that, you know, have like distorted kicks and stuff. Like it's it's just a choice. But if you want the clean shit, you got to do a little work. You got to you got to do these methods right here. I can't really think of anything else. Maybe I'm missing something, but if you want your shit to actually be fucking clean, it's like super clean. You got to do this stuff, you know? Uh, I like clipping uh, production technique and clipping the group. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm just saying like if you want if you want super, super clean, no distortion, no weird phase alignment, doubling, low end, and all that bullshit, you got to, like, do some work, you know? You got to do a little crossfade, a little volume envelope. Uh, you could use, like, sidechain. You could do LFO tool. You know, it's all the same shit. It's just doing a volume dip, you know? I like the way this sounds, though. I got to be honest. This this one dry just with a limiter sounds sick to me. Like that sounds great too. You know, uh, sim simply pan the eight oh eight hard left and the kick hard right. Nice, dude. Okay, that's disgusting. I would never ever do that. <laughs> Hopefully, people don't start doing that. That's terrible. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I think uh, I got to run. I got a meeting, but hopefully that kind of covers it. Did we get to the bottom of it? Did we figure it out? I feel like we did, but maybe we didn't. <laughs> Somebody else way smarter than me is going to do a, do a video or something and then just, just disprove everything I've shown here. But I will say that these waveforms don't lie, man. The shit doesn't lie. Like... You can just look at it. Here's with outside chain. It's just louder. It's just literally doubling the low end, you know? Oh, wait, you can't. That's the dry one, right? Look how much louder it is, right? Which can sound cool, but, like, if you want the clean shit, you got to do a crossfade, do this, do this, do this. All right, I'm just repeating myself at this point, so. There you go. Pick your... um. I mean, all those work the same. They're literally the same kind of thing. I mean, the phase alignment, honestly, is like on just a technical level, the best sounding way to do it, but it's just like a pain in the ass, you know? Like you're not, in practice, I don't think you're really going to do that. I think some people do, but anyways, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, hopefully I can stream soon again. And uh, yeah, take it easy. I gotta send this one to uh, Soul State, right? Maybe I'll do that. Get this fucking thing on the YouTube's. He can edit out all my bullshit, you know, make it more concise. All right, take it easy, boys.